And good morning, everybody, or afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, welcome to a special Star Wars CCG special event. Uh, this is the final confrontation of the Jawa Brawl. Uh, joining me today is the man himself, Bill Kafer. How you doing, Bill? Uh, I'll be doing better if the Steelers win, but I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I like to hear that. So today we have the final confrontation between Brad Kipple and Joe Olson for the Jawa Brawl. Uh, the brawl ended a little bit ago. And uh, looks like both these players are ready. Uh, Brad's going to be playing light side first. Uh, any thoughts on what the players could be playing today? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. And we are seeing Diplo versus Hunt Down V. Interesting. That's a good point. And I mean, the other thing is, like, Brad doesn't have a lot of four strain bonuses, like with uh, the stuff that you see, like in uh, Yavin 4 Ops or uh, light with decks with lightsabers. So the, the seven side of his objective is not really going to matter that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, and, but I mean, if you're Joe, you still don't want to lose the force. True. Okay, so we got some shields already being pulled. We got the uh, golden rod, aim high, the grabber shield from Brad. Joe got Brabber in secret plans. Joe starting with the Malachor 01 site that allows you to play Darth Maul, or just the set, what, 13 Maul? Mm hmm. I, know, I, I mean, I would like to see play, people play with the uh, security tower, the Cloud City security tower, just so you can get Lando. Yeah, but the new Lando is pretty cool. I mean, we have, don't see a lot of decks playing it. That's fair. Got your first set 19 card here. Yeah, the Darth Vader, or just Vader. Uh, I think he's pretty good against deck like decks like Diplo. Well, so this this Vader in Hunt Down V is interesting because he's just going to sit there at that 2-1 that and drain for 3, right? That's what he's threatening immediately. He doesn't even have to go to uh, Tatooine right away. Oh, they yeah, can and Joe doesn't have to uh, lose the 1 Force to Visage. Okay. But yeah, so like that Vader is best when left alone to fight alone, right? And so mm -hmm. in this Hunt Down V, you can just drop him there. He, he's power plus 2, he drains plus 1. Um, he drains plus one for the saber. He can pull, uh, in this game, probably Vader's Anger to add to total battle destiny. So he's yeah. just like a tank. Okay, there's the Alderaan system, as well as Senator Mon Mothma from Brad. Chandrilla. 
Noticing Brad, almost all of Brad's deck is foil. Definitely a participant in the uh, the Batmouse foil league, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and the other thing is like he, like you said, he plays a lot of Diplo. So if, if there's one deck he's going to foil out, it is this Diplo. Yeah. Oh, looks like Steelers just got an, uh, a turnover. That makes me happy. Yeah, I got the game behind me. I watch it behind you like this. I don't have any cable or streaming services that are playing football right now, so. No, they didn't. They just. <laughs> All right, so Brad moved over. That's that's an unfortunate visage loss uh, at the end of his turn, uh, losing Moss Isley off the top of reserve. Yeah, and I mean, he could have easily. Well, no, he didn't have the force there, so he can't even get back. And now, like you said, Joe is threatening a drain of three. I mean, Brad does pull the battle plan, but I think Joe's going to easily pay this drain uh, to drain. No, he does not drain. Oh, Interesting. okay. Well, the one thing, okay. Joe's going really hard. Okay, I like this. Mara Jade in the shuttle, the decimator, the VT49 decimator, as well, uh, as, well as the Ninth Sister. Brad doesn't have a pilot on there so he's not going to be drawing destiny and joe's going to get two i'm going to draw two. Oh, <laughs> all right this is some sweet action here yeah so jedi oh, mind right. trick and then a sense to cancel it yep the only destiny joe did not want to see there was emperor palpatine surprised joe didn't put down a, a hatred card maybe he doesn't play this deck that often you can okay there he goes you can put that in space, and uh, you'll get plus one to your total de total battle destiny. And then also because there's a inquisitor there, it's another plus one to total battle destiny. Yeah, you can't he's gonna see draw two. Plus game text. He's gonna draw two. He's gonna add two to the total. He gets redraws from enforcement. His inquisitors are all destiny plus one. Yeah, this is looking. If you can clear what's Mothma's forfeit eight. Yeah, then you gotta get oh, yeah you get Mothma and. Uh... R2-D2 and C-3PO. So there's four, which is a total of six already. And another three, so nine total. You do get rid of both. Yeah. You gotta send and... the plans back to the Dune Sea. Yeah. That's gonna definitely slow Brad down a lot. So most Hunt Down virtual lists, there aren't a ton of them, but like, I ran this for a good portion of the OCS this year. Um, most of them don't play a ton of space, so I understand why Brad went for, you know, like the quick extra generation from Ch Chandrilla, and uh, I guess that Joe wasn't running much space, so. No, it's definitely a really good first set of turns from Joe. Now, he is, doesn't have a lot of cards yet. Like, he's only got four cards left in his uh, hand at this point. Again, does not lose the visage. But now Brad is slowed down to the point where now he has to get another ship, or he has to move the, the tandem over, get a guy down to the Dune Sea, and then shuttle up with it. Okay, ooh. There you go. Gold leader and gold one from Brad. Okay. Get the action here. Yeah, a lot of action already. Bail, too. So that's two destinies for Brad. And Joe, while he is getting two destinies, he's not going to be able to pay for it. Yeah, so he's not going to get any destinies. There's Leia going down to the Dune Sea. That's good. Leia can pick up the plans and get shuttled up when Tantive moves back. Likely. When was the last time you saw this much action from like a Diplo deck? I mean, this is what Diplo, like, people sleep on Diplo a little bit, say, like, it, it starts pretty slow, but you get power and space pretty quick. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you start with a star, uh, starship on the table already. Yeah. He had 12 cards in his hand, so it wasn't yeah, like exactly. he was hurting for resources. Four four, four should clear both. 
Yeah. Yeah, the sisters doesn't have a lot of forfeit value. Yep. So down by 15, so Joe's going to have to peel a little. At five and seven, I think, so peel three. Mm hmm There's three, four. That was four. Okay. Sonic, Mara Jade, Stormtrooper Garrison, Accelerate. Yeah, I think the Mara Jade is probably the most important card there lost. An interesting split to be running one ship and one EPP. And he doesn't move the... He doesn't move back over to Tatooine at all. I mean, it gives him the extra force generation, but he's got to get the plans at some point. I mean, he really doesn't. <laughs> you can play Diplo without flipping. You just have a bunch of good characters that draw Destiny. If that's going to be the game, that's going to be the game. Basically, it's better to flip. Now the biggest issue for Joe is he just he's not generating a lot of force at this point. He's only getting ten each turn. That was one of the issues I had with the the hunt down V. Like if you only run the one Malachor site and uh, then you use like accelerates for bridge or Sonic for the two O, you don't get those. That's that's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Moves into this control phase here. So Joe is going to drain. Yeah, we might see an Emperor shuttle with the Emperor. Okay, loses Hera, Hojix, and an escape pod combo. Uh, losing that Hojix is pretty good for Joe, uh, as well as Hera. Hera, definitely a good card. Yeah, it's a destiny against every character in this deck, so mm -hmm. it's pretty good. And Joe's just going to draw some here. I also wouldn't be surprised if uh, Brad was running two Hoojiks. Yeah. Joe draws. Looks like he's going to save a card in his force pile. Again, the, this is the finals of the Jawa Brawl. Uh, I think the winner gets that sweet, sweet and coveted... Uh, Dark side reflections one foil uncut sheet. Joe playing We Must Accelerator plans to take a We Must Accelerator plans into hand. And even though, like, Joe has lost uh, at least one of his ships and, you know, the, the got counterattacked on, he's at least made Brad lose a bunch of cards here, which Diplo doesn't want to do early. Mm -hmm. um, they're really looking to stabilize and uh, maybe do some retrieval with a celebration. Hitting them early is kind of tough. I mean, he hasn't lost a celebration yet. So, okay, there goes a uh, seventh sister to the drain at Chandrilla. There's a wild card and an eighth brother, so Joe's losing characters to to Drainson. I mean, he has enforcement though that he should be able to get back online at some point. Um, so we'll be able to get some of those characters back, actually. Well, I mean, but that also means that his destinies are much bigger. Mm, true. So the wild card play to Tatooine shows me that. Chewbacca is probably going to pick up the plans. Mm -hmm. uh, shuttle up to wild card. The wild card is going to move to Chandrilla. Ship dock into uh, Gold Leader, and then Gold Leader is going to move to Alderaan to deliver the plans. And 
there's a also loop. setting up Luke here too is big because that's gonna flip back uh, Joe. Uh, but Joe does take advantage of the flip back text and take Vader into hand. Mm -hmm. Smart move. That cantina gives him two extra force, so twelve is not terrible now. No. He has an accelerate in hand as well, so we could get the bridge next turn. Okay. Yeah, so Joe, yeah, like you said, Joe's going to get 12, which is pretty upset a little bit. Not to the point where he's doing anything significant, but I mean, now he's going to have to redeploy Vader. 12 is enough to do Vader and an Inquisitor generally. Mm -hmm. Push seems weird now unless he knows what that one card is yeah i don't know how he would know what that one card is you know he's been through his deck a couple times now and he did only use three force last turn for his force drain sure but now like he knows that it's the card he wants is one of the four cards <laughs> true and, and the other thing is now i mean that does give him an extra point of force though would also give him an extra point of force next turn when he could get better choices of things. True. And if I was Joe here, I'd be looking for barrier canceller. Um, if he's running it, a it's a trap canceller, a dodge canceller, narrow escape canceller, right? So like any of those. Things are right within Brad's wheelhouse, especially splitting all of his characters up one by one. Yeah. A wild card can go directly to Alderaan. That's pretty good. Yeah, hyperspace five. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, how does it? Yeah, how did it get over there? It's hyperspeed five. It goes from seven to two. Yeah. Sorry, math is not my strong point. First revert. Okay, so he must be looking for blast door in those four cards, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't the one he put down. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I do agree with you, though, that Joe should have just uh, activated and then used the force push. Yeah, so blast door will stop barrier and narrow escape shenanigans. Mm -hmm. um, I only save two, so he doesn't have uh, its trap. So really, if you can cancel the dodge, you can beat down on somebody. Down comes a Vader Enforcer. Oh, okay. And there's the saber. Now, I mean, now I can cancel Owen Baru's game tax, so they won't draw destiny. They can't dodge either. Yeah. Smart going there. I mean, you could have went to Leia and did the same thing, but smart going against Owen and Baru because, like you said, they can't dodge. And with the blast door controls, you, you don't have you don't have to worry about the the barrier, the narrow escape, any of that. Okay. Antilles maneuver. I think if you're Joe, you're okay with that. I mean, yeah, you have to pay a force, but. Yeah, the biggest thing here is if Brad runs a second Hujix. Yes. And then if he does, he he might have pulled it last turn with the he got to pull any card with the Diplo flip. Yeah, it looks like the Jets are already down seven nothing there, Bill. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, at least you're doing well this week with the uh, the fantasy football. Far. Okay, here we go. Vader versus Owen and Baru. And Vader will swing. Let's see about that. Vader is okay. There's the dodge. Well, that's a two. 
with Vader's, and there's Vader's anger to cancel it. So it cancels Dodge. Yep. Grabs the Vader's anger. I think that's a smart move there. Ooh. Draws a zero. That's, that hurts. But follow up. Found the second with... force push, though. He's fine. Yeah. He's fine. Got the little animation there showing that Bone and Brew are hit. Brad will lose a Rebel Barrier from his reserve deck. Destiny of three. Could have been better. Yeah. Uh, let's see if Brad has that Hojix, though. Because right now he's losing five on top of the Owner Brew. There's the second Hojix. I'm not surprised. No. I'm not either. So Brad did have the dodge, but Joe had the canceler in Vader's anger. Okay, Vader does move over in front of Leia. But, so looks like Joe's going to take uh, four strain of one and two this turn, though. And it should be. To lose the visage. It's going to be two and two, because uh, Bale. Bale is also drain plus one. That's true. And he loses another fifth brother off the top of his deck to the Visage Ping. I think that's the first, first fifth brother. Oh. I don't know. Like, uh, I, I just can't really tell between the brothers at this point. Like, all the, the Inquisitors look the same to me. Okay. <laughs> fifth brother is the good one. I mean, the, the ninth sister is the good one. Uh, she's the good one. I just find it funny that all the uh, the sisters are better than the brothers at this point. There goes first strike and sense. And sonic bombardment. Target. Target detected. So what do you think player the players are playing on the other side? So what do you put Joe on at this point? And what do you put Brad on? Um, yeah, and Joe can really play anything, so it's really tough to say, oh, okay, he's going to play this. Um, what would I think is the best deck? So, like, Zero Hour, again, in play. Um, the Anakin family deck is pretty strong. The, what's the other light deck that I like in this format? QMC is not banned, so I could, so I could see QMC. And then Brad is a big fan of Walkers, and Walkers is definitely illegal in this format. Uh, card, I, I'm seeing a lot of play in Diplo recently. The Weather Vane, I like that. You do spread out a lot in this deck, so like he's able to turn that around four times. Mm hmm much every turn. I mean, look what he's going to do next turn. He's moving over to Tatooine. He's going to move Wildcard to Chandrila. So, like, you're threatening one, two, three, four, five yeah. drains. Yeah. Plus a battle. Oh, Jared's right. Slip sliding away is banned. I could still see Hoth CRV walkers. I don't think you lose too much by playing that. Uh, you kind of do, just because you can't start the, the other site. Yeah, but that's fine. Um, Setting up for be, draining uh, of two and doing one. Could be this deal is getting worse all the time. It's another slip sliding away deck. True. Let me pull up my list here. I was gonna say stunning well, move, playable. Stunning move. Yeah. Who I'm not sure if Black is away. Away. In reality. Yeah. Like, seriously. Yeah, that was me. I did that. Okay, there's the masterful move combo. A cancel celebration. Vader. So it's going to be below. I mean, he could lose a card with. He could use uh, Walkling, put it out of play, retrieve it. But instead, it looks like he's just going to leave it in the lost pile. I think you play two most of the time with this deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. 
I mean, Hunt Down is live, Hunt Down V is live, Thrawn is live. Yeah, who's gonna play Thrawn? Um, Set Your Course is live in this, right? Yes. Oh, and the Revenge of the Sith decks are all live too. Yeah. Yeah, I like Set Your Course in this format. I think I like set your course in anything. Uh, we have an Ellis Hellrot. And Joe's going to have move Vader. Two. It's a hit. We'll cancel that. Yeah, I'm surprised Joe didn't drain first. I mean, he has to pay, and if he thinks he's going there and he wants to put another character down. Okay, that's tough. true. But it's a hit is huge from Brad. He only had three card or what three cards or four cards in his hand before he played it. Four card hand. One of them was it's a hit. Yeah. Joe thinking about if he wants to grab the it's a hit. I'm assuming. Carl in the chat has predicted that we're going to see his first prediction was Anakin family versus Walker. Then he revised it to Anakin family versus revenge of the Sith Vader. Interesting. I mean, that Vader deck feels like it's flying under the radar a little bit. Like yeah. It's almost as good. So the, the Dooku deck, obviously very fun to play. You can throw the BB nines in there. Interesting deck. The Vader deck that like, I think, Justin Miyashiro was running it, and I've seen Matt Sperling running it too, where you start Bespin as your site, mm -hmm. or as your battlegrounds, and you set up a, a free executor. Pretty good. So we do have a break in the action. Let's see, is this moving? Yeah, it's still Joe's thinking here. Okay. I thought the I thought it froze for a second. No, still just deciding to grab it's a hit versus, you know, I, what else would you even think to grab here? Yeah, you don't want him moving, uh, keeping that around, going around. He has no way to... Oh, he's got Willard. So he does have a way to loop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see grabbing that. It is, it is a lost interrupt right now, so you could also bury it by draining. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't see any reason really to grab it here. He could all right. Maybe you do grab it because if you don't grab it, he can walkling it back immediately. True. Knows right where it is. That's probably what Joe is debating in his head right now. I mean, Joe is a better player than me, so I mean, any decision he makes, I'm not really going to question too much. I am. I'm going to question that force push. <laughs> I want you to message him afterwards and be like, Joe, what was that, that force push? Why did you force push? Yeah. Okay, so he is going to drain for two. And it's going to go through here. I mean, the it's a hit is grabbed. Brad That's kind of why I thought that, um, what's his face? The, the dark side had the advantage here, right? Because you can, Brad's down to 14 cards plus three in hand mm. already. And he's obviously going to do a ton of damage on his next turn, but... I'm gonna win by a ton. Yeah, Joe's got 24 in life force at this point. Okay, there we go. Grand Inquisitor is gonna come down against General Aaron Kra uh, Aaron Kraken. There's the Inquisitor in effect. I'm assuming that Brad is gonna lose one here. Yep, loses guts off the top. Is he getting plus four to total destiny? That's pretty good. Yeah, that should crack the immunity of the in Aaron Inquisitor. I think Joe just wants to make him lose the uh, the crack in here. Yeah, and Joe not being able to set up um, uh, enforcement of that going is going to be tough. So not able to like retrieve some extra characters and such.
Okay, time for the Pittsburgh to sit Mr. Trubisky. He threw his first interception of the year. No, he's your best quarterback by far. Dark Giant lightsaber against uh, on to the Grand Inquisitor. So, I wonder if Joe is able to cause overflow here. I don't think so. Like you said, he's Reckon, plus four. Reckon's 11 plus a destiny. Quizzer is going to be 7 plus a destiny, so I guess not. Yeah. Yeah, he just moves into his move phase. And Vader moves over in front of Luke. Now, and there's the Walkling going out of play, so he's going to retrieve the guts. But Brad's still doing drains of uh, two at Chandrilla. And he's doing a drain of two at the farm. And a drain of two at uh, Tatooine. Uh, the Antilles maneuver is interesting too because if you hold, like I know he's playing it so he can draw it for destiny but if you hold on to that, Vader can't fire against Luke yeah yeah, Vader can't fire against Luke um, th there's a lot I mean, he, he looks like he's going to get it back though with Willard it's weird yeah okay. And then you know Luke's going to be able to get rid of Vader here. Yeah. But you know that Joe has another Vader in his hand. Okay. Let's have the Vader V. Yeah. Drain of two. That's Chandrilla. The weather vane rotates. Weather vane rotates again. Yeah. Joe losing six there this turn. That hurts. Yeah. And the brother, then the weather vane just rotates. He'll be able to play that Antilles maneuver again, mm -hmm. battle into Vader, and flip it again to retrieve one. Yeah. So Brad's deck is what a three and a mystery card, because it was the force he retrieved with Walkling. Okay, so a three he and a mystery card. Well, he just uh, changes up his. He looks doesn't look like he's tracking there. Because he did just uh, check his destinies. No, he'll know what it is because he can draw the top card with Nora. Uh, his total destiny is going to be plus five now. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. Yeah. There's the so Antilles maneuver. Uh, he doesn't draw the top card with Nara, so he saves two. So I'm assuming he's going to fight here with Vader and with Kraken. He might as well. Okay, Luke's going to fight into Vader. He does retrieve one. Retrieves a Hojix. Ooh, draws a five. That becomes a nine. I did not realize that uh, Clearbane was retrieve any one card. That's actually very good. Yeah. Joe I thought Joe's it was just retrieve one. So Joe's not going to take any overflow here, but Luke's going to stick around. He's got one overflow. No. Vader's eight, right? Oh yeah, okay. I was looking at the attrition, not the not the battle damage. Wow, weather veins retrieve any card. That's kind of insane. That's interesting. Retrieve any one card, and he retrieves the Hojix. That's uh really strong. He'll be able to have that back in his hand next turn. That'll be a Willard. Yeah. Okay, we see our second fight. Kraken versus the Inquisitor. Joe draws a 1 and a 5 for his weapon destiny, so it's definitely going to hit the Kraken. Kraken's going to draw an 8 for battle destiny. That's pretty big. So that gets rid of the Inquisitor. Joe needs a, at least a six here. There's your six, There's which becomes six an eight. 
Yeah. But still not Kraken, causing any overflow. Yeah, because Kraken still retains his forfeit value as the Dark Jedi lightsaber doesn't do any, doesn't make your forfeit zero. So, right now, life force totals are tied, 17 apiece. Joe has five cards in hands, though. And nothing on board. <laughs> yeah. Nara moves over with Luke. And then Brad will draw a few. Just so you know, Bill, your Jets are tied with the with the Browns. That's good. Seven all. Seven all. Joe Flacco, first touchdown. He's elite. He is. Why did Baltimore ever get rid of him? This other guy who's not terrible. I don't know. Not Joe, bad. For Joe back. Flacco got you a Super Bowl. What has this new guy done? He's league MVP. Much more elite than Joe Flacco. Joe activates 12, saving he's got 5 force left in his reserve deck. So we know he's got Vader in his hand, but other than that, we don't know what the other four cards are. We haven't seen a ton of Inquisitors go off. I mean, the deck usually pay, plays like 9 or 10 mm -hmm. copies, right? And we've seen one of each loss, I think. Yeah. Uh, we have seen him. Uh, he does have the Emperor Shuttles in his deck somewhere. And I think it's the top Emperor card. Too. Right? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's the top card. His destiny should be what? It's a three. It's a five. It's a two. No, it's a one. It's a three, five, one. And then I forget what he drew in the first battle with Vader. I wasn't paying attention. Six. He drew a six in there as well. Oh, he did draw six. Okay, so he drew six for destiny. But that was against the uh, Inquisitor. What was the Emperor's Shuttle then? The I think the Emperor's Shuttle might have been against Vader. Yeah, uh, it was Vader and uh, Luke. Okay. And he's, he's got six five Vader. on top. Let's see. Yeah, drew Emperor Shuttle for Battle Destiny. Drew. A... A five and a uh, one and a five, so it should go three, one, five, six, and then unknown. That's one of the nice things about Gimp. You can scroll up to see what is there. Whereas in real life, you have to remember everything. It's terrible. I hate remembering things. I know. Okay, so Vader comes down against Luke and Nara. Interesting. Loses a sniper and dark stripe off the top of his use pile to get Vader's lightsaber back. Again, Brad is getting plus four to his total battle destiny. Er, he's flipped, right? Plus four. Vader's gonna die. Well, yeah, I was going to say, because, like, I don't know why, but the new interface is showing that Brad is not flipped. Okay, the weather vane goes counterclockwise. Swing at Luke here because you have 6-5 on top, but then you're only going to draw one. I mean, he could shuffle up. If he could find a way to shuffle up his reserve deck and get that one off the top. But it's like 1-3 and unknown, so it's not... Yeah. It's not the best. You're just trying to clear. And you cause a little damage with the, the I Am Your Father. Mm -hmm. So there's a 3 off the top for Brad. Uh, Vader would, is immune less than 8 here, though, because of, he's with a Jedi. 
So Brad needs to draw a four or higher. It's less than seven, so he needs a three or higher. Oh, less than seven. Okay. I thought it was eight. My bad. So yeah, you are correct. He needs a three or higher. And he does lose a three off the top, though. My guess is most of his things in there are either characters that he can redraw or uh, three or higher. How's he redraw would be too with, uh, how does he redraw? I love. Yep, Joe draws a one. But he becomes a zero with their tracking this. Ooh, that hurts. Yeah, that's unfortunate. This is probably where you concede uh, if you're Joe in a normal game. Yep, there's a five, so Vader goes lost. Vader might be taking some overflow here. 17 down by eight. Yeah, overflow of three. Actually, it was a gig. First loss. Yeah, that hurt. That kind of. Uh, <laughs> that, that's it's always ironic. Sad. To me. It's a little sad. But Luke's off. Just ready to draw up here. So Brad is going to win by sixteen, I think. Unless he's got used interrupts, he can put back with a uh, Willard. My guess, right? Because he, he's going to activate down to what? That's they're tracking us, so he can put that back. Well, I mean, Brad can't finish Joe out this turn because it's going to be, it's he's losing eight in total here. And then the other thing is with the weather vane, he's going to actually retrieve another force. So Brad should right. win by 16. 17. 17. I think he's going to be able to put back a, at least one used interrupt because. His top card is there tracking us. Oh, yeah. And he's but... going to have to lose the other card in his hand to Visage. Yeah, Joe's not losing from his life force, though. Okay, there goes Emperor and Emperor's Shuttle. Well, uh, uh, Brad's, Brad's still going to lose to Visage here. Use a Jedi mind trick with the weather vane. Play Shiru. Interesting. I'm just trying not to get beat down there. Yeah. Though I don't know what Joe would do with seven force. Vader We're fine winning by sixteen. Uh, it's gonna be fifteen because of the visage. Oh no! You, yeah, you can lose from your hand. So Ray moves. Yeah, Joe away. very likely to just draw up because otherwise he's gonna give up another round of drains, which can weather vein back a card. True. And there's all seven. So, yeah, you're correct, 16. Sixteen is not a bad number. What, 16? Yeah, that's not a bad number. It's not a terrible number. I mean, you, you can overcome that still. I mean, he used Joe Olsen for a reason. And so, good job, Brad. I mean, after that nice little, I mean, that first turn by Joe, or the, what, the second turn by Joe going down and being able to get 
the the Marish and Mara shuttle and the Ninth Sister. Like it looked like he was in a really good position, but Brad came down with the counter beat on his next turn. We're gonna move right into the second game. Looks like yeah. Just adding up the making sure we got the results and everything. So let's go ahead and get out of this one and let's wait for them to get the second game going. Okay, this looks like it is up. Brad on dark side this turn. So obviously we're switching side as that's the normal for any Star Wars final confrontation. Quiet Mighty right. Colony versus it does look like it's going to be a uh, Revenge of the Sith deck. Yeah, the Jabba's Palace makes me think it's probably um, Dooku. I mean, we kind of saw this game in like, yeah, a, yeah you're right, it is the Dooku version. I mean, we saw this kind of a matchup back in Nationals Finals versus uh, Brad Reinhold versus Joe Olson. Yep. Or no, that was uh, Brian Fred versus... It was Brian Fred versus Brad in the yeah. semifinals, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay, so Brad is getting Tragedy of Plagueis, Jabba's Haven, and Evil is Everywhere. Joe it starts with Beldin's Eye combo. Uh, Beldin's Eye and All My Urchins and Keeping the Empire Out Forever. So here we go. Yeah, I'm clearly watching football and watching this game. As you can probably tell. <laughs> See, my gut reaction here is I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. And wow. Um, Upset of the the week so far. It was like you can put down Sidious and you can't modify or cancel the drains, right? Yeah. Is that what it says? Uh I think it's at Cancel or reduce. The opponent may not reduce or cancel at their battlegrounds where you have a Dark Jedi. So modify? May not cancel or reduce. Okay. So all of the, the four strain minus one text on the QMC gets nullified. Yeah. Um you can start draining for three immediately. You have pretty decent space with the uh the invisible hand and yeah. um trench giving you uh immunity to attrition. I mean, that's you can get a saw. lot of power in space though too. That's what we saw Brian do to Brad in the in the semis. He came down with Dooku and was just draining for three all day. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like yeah, Jared in the chest is pretty sure this is a very good matchup for Brad. I agree. I'm really surprised to see Joe go with Quiet Minor Colony. I mean, you, you said it in the chat earlier. But... Yeah, no, I'm not surprised. They uh, So the Team 5 guys, they they like QMC a decent amount. I know Cal played it at an event. Um, I could see them playing it at Worlds. I mean, they think it's pretty good. You just run into a buzzsaw that is this Revenge of the Sith deck. Uh, Brad, a uh, good opening hand. He's got the dungeon out first, and then he's got he had the bridge. So, and there's another grabber for him. So, yeah, really strong start by Brad. And looks like he's just gonna draw up, satisfied with what he uh, got out on the table his first turn. Joe, now he did play the local defense combo. Uh, let's see, what did he grab with that? He grabbed the wild card. So I'm going to assume oh, Joe is playing the Ancient Watering Hole version of this deck. Uh, Brad Kipple won the first game. He won it by 16. It's, in the, it's literally on the screen, Timo. <laughs> okay, here we go. Joe getting out some of the sights. Jeez. Wow. That's not great. <laughs> That's not a good opening hand. I mean, he's got the ancient watering hole, but... The two sights in your opening hand is not nah, the best. That's not good. You at least get Hark, and you're going to generate a ton of force now, so you can just draw this turn and be fine. 
do you risk uh but the thing is like you said you can easily pull the invisible hand with the sight yeah but you need to put somebody there so it's, it's very tough for them to actually come down and like fight you on turn two it's just that they're going to be annoying to dislodge yeah and unfortunately for joe landy claw has a very good counter yeah, i wouldn't expect landing claw usually you're just gonna all right with the hand he has he has wild card in hand he's about to have han chewie and falcon you're just gonna fight in space okay you're not worried um because you can do a ton of uh you can get a ton of power that way yeah um oh yeah if you need to run away you have the docking bay too and with now Huda on the table you have another site the system to run to both those are from hand for Brad, so both players are getting out a lot of their <laughs> locations in their hand. That's not good. Joe's going to have 17 force on turn two. That's insane. It's a matter of if he has characters or not, because we know <laughs> yeah. two of the cards are ships. Yeah, two ships, so five unknown cards in Joe's hand. So I can see Joe going incredibly wide here, right? So like with the Revenge, you can only play the two Dark Jedi, and then you have a limited number of other characters you can play. Well, I mean, you can play Grievous, you can play Mara Jade. Yeah, Kylo, and, like, I understand, but, like, yeah. you are concentrated on those two characters, and QMC is very good at ignoring, you know, one character, True. right? I mean, we saw that with, like, cards like, uh, what, Path of the Least Resistance, Lift Tube, and Lift Tube Escape, if you're getting saucy. Uh, Path of Least Batty. Resistance works on the Invisible Hand sites also. True. It is rescue, so you have some extra flexibility in this game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if, if you're Joe, you really need to set up the ancient watering hole and just start doing a lot of damage. And holy crap, uh, Brad gets out the two locations that he deploys, and then he just draws. He's got a hand of 15 cards in his hand. I wonder if Joe is playing the the table flipper. Uh, the QMC list is really tight. It's very tough to get Grimtosh into decks these days. Mm There's a drain of one for Joe. Kylo Ren goes off the top. Wild card goes down to the docking bay. Kalthal Sindros goes down to the zero, the one O site. And we'll flip to Joe. Joe looking at cards in his force pile. It's a pretty good flip because you can uh, send Kalthal over to the wild card and send it up. Mm -hmm. So now you would have a battle destiny. If both players are drawn one, Cal Fowl might come into play. So, pretty good turn for Joe. I think just being able to flip with six cards in hand, knowing two of them are ships, is a pretty good turn. Yeah. And now he can start building his hand. And if you randomly play a spy, maybe like a, what was, I was running a Bothan spy for a bit. You run Momo on Nadan, she's a species. Um, you can just go to this uh, 2 0 bridge. They are unable to control it to pull the invisible hand as well. That's interesting. Joe's going to build up his hand, like you said, so he does flip. He moves everybody back up to Bespin, so now he's going to get Destiny to Power and a, des a Battle Destiny here. Uh, Cal Falcindros is not a smuggler, so he doesn't get the plus one to total. But he's got two species on the table already. He's getting there. Slowly. I, I just, like, I like Ancient Watering Hole. I think five is just a really big number for that card. You get a very good bonus out of it. It just feels sometimes like it's win more, right? Because, like, if you are able to get five species on the table, you probably have several battlegrounds, so you're going to drain for a whole bunch anyway. So the extra one is... Not, it's not insignificant, but it's not... I feel like you're already winning a lot of the games once you get 
watering hole online. True. Joe draws to 15, saving himself four in force pile. Now, with him controlling Bespin, his, uh, Brad will pay plus one to deploy there. You have not missed the sticker book token, so Bill, what do you want for a sticker book token? Oh man, what's a what's a Taco Bell design card in this that we're gonna see? Um, I mean, there's the obvious one. Let's go with the non-obvious one. Did you design always two? There are always two. There are. Okay, so there's that the will be your sticker one, book token. Always two. There are with a dark Jedi lightsaber trench with the invisible hand goes to now Hutta. So Brad is starting to drain a free and that's the one that allows him to cancel drains. Yeah, but that's I mean, you can't cancel drains against QMC. So that's not great. Well, I mean you can cancel if they don't have a alien there. Sure. But yeah, right now you're not canceling. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Brad play just the battle order right here. So what I'm thinking now, if I'm Joe, I have Han Chewie Falcon in my hand. I'm just power eight and forfeit five. If you can set up Han Chewie Falcon with like, that's a destiny. Somebody has a destiny, like a Lando. You're playing that Lando. Um, if you could Din Djarin like and any I'm other alien. Mm -hmm. You can Leia. clear space here. Le uh, Princess Leia, Leia with blaster rifle. They both add with Han. Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to run into command, but even if you draw, like, you're able to get, what, three more species and draw Destiny at plus two? Is it plus two? If you get Paz up there, okay. Well, I mean, you would. I would rather see him limit you over... Adding. Right, no, you're good. He's going to limit. Yeah. Um, if if Joe draws two, you still draw plus one from Watering Hole. True. If you can get it online. He's got 21 force to work with. I'd say 20 because he's going to take a card. I'm surprised he didn't take a card during uh, Brad's turn. He did. You missed it. The other thing is Joe might want to set up his um, ultimatum here so that way he only loses two instead of three to the drain. Yeah, there's a lot of different avenues you can take. You can also just like spread out and try to do a ton of damage. Because mm -hmm. he is down by 16 at this point. Durant onto the wild card. He has one smuggler on there. The third species. Mm -hmm. You're in there. And then Rio, it's not such a wooden wild card. Rio can put a card back to activate two. Yeah, it looks like Joe is going to do that. So now he's going to have 19 force to work with after deploying Rio. Thomas Ka comes down. Species number four. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get the species online this, this turn. Kira. She's number five. I wonder if he's got the uh, Cloud City Celebration. Yeah, 
There you go, right on cue. It's like it's like I read his hand. So now, assuming he could, he could get ultimatum online, so he'd only lose a drain of two and one next turn. But like you said, he could easily challenge with something to go to the invisible hand. Now, I'm assuming that's the only ship that Brad is playing here is the invisible hand. Um, I don't know. You could see more ships in this deck, like something like a Zuckus could make sense, or like, um. Uh, even like Ellis, because you can get it back with Haven. And there's also the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit, the blockade support ship. Mm -hmm. So good, a good ship. Ayla Secura going down. Yeah, I think Joe's trying to go wide here. Yeah, I think that's the right uh, avenue for him. Because Ray going down to the Invisible Hand hallway. Yeah, Joe's going pretty wide. I like I like this. I mean, he's threatening drains of three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven next turn. Oh, yeah, eleven. Yeah. And retrieving three. Okay, there's the ultimatum. But you imagine he has uh, a path in hand, at least one. You imagine he has a dodge in hand. Maybe a Hojix if needed. I mean, yeah. Brad's activating. He's going to have 20 force to work with next turn. And we haven't seen. He's got a 18 card hand. So he's definitely got a lot to work with. There's the wise advice from uh, Joe. I wouldn't be surprised to see a masterful move combo from Brad here, and then then he drains. Yeah, bury the. Uh... Mm -hmm. Well, so Joe's not playing Walkling, so you don't really need to bury it. Again. Yeah, I mean the only retrieval I can think of outside of that one would, would be like an Obi Wan Kenobi D to exchange with it. There's an Imperial Command, so Brad's going to go... Looks, I'm assuming he's going to go get General Grievous here. Hello there. Joe grabs the Imperial Command. He actually grabbed Thrawn. So he probably has a Grievous already. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's the Masterful Move combo. You gotta think Joe's got some way of getting it back or playing a different one, or another one. And you're probably playing two. Most decks where you're playing one. Okay, here we go. Brad's next turn activating. He's getting 18 force to work with, so that would leave him with five cards in his uh, reserve deck if he activates everything. But he's gonna have 22 cards to work with as well. And with a 15 card hand, that's going to give him a lot. Now, again, his guys uh, come down to best or to Cloud City at plus one because Joe controls the system currently. So let's see what Brad's going to do this turn. I'm assuming he is going to drain here. And again, it's going to be a drain of one and two. Choke off the top. Interesting. 
It's a really good card in this deck because you can either cancel uh, a Dark Side Aliens text, so like something like um, Doctor E, mm -hmm. or you can use one alien to satisfy all attrition. Okay, Master Luke, and what chance do we have off the top, or what chance do we have as uh, from his hand? Brad checking out his destiny here. Again, Brad won game one by 16. Joe has to win by 17 or higher to repeat as champion. He win the last Jawa Brawl? He did. So we ban him from these things normally. Blast door controls. going to stop any rebel barriers that Joe plays. There's a force push. Brad correctly playing force push after activating. So if I'm Brad, I'm looking for a way to attack two sites this turn. If you do it right, you can get rid of two aliens, right? And you leave Ray as whatever. Uh, Ayla is attackable, I guess, because you can't um, path from the docking bay. You can still dodge. All right, what? Noakescape V. I don't like this Noakescape V there because he's only getting the force push back. That's choice. <laughs> yeah, he realizes it in the chat. I think that's the that's the only mistake uh, that Brad has done this entire these both these games. I want you to know that both mistakes that I've caught have now involved force push. Between that and Joe playing it at a <laughs> random time. Okay, I saw his Ventress going down in front of Ray. Like I, 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 I agree. Ray is not really worth much. I mean, it, is, it would be a drain of three there, but you want to get rid of the aliens first. But she only does. She does come down for five instead of six to uh, the Invisible Hand hallway. It still is a drain of two, even if you get rid of the aliens. Yeah, exactly. Savage. Savage Oppress. Chris Benzel is happy about that. Is minus one. And plus one. Joe was playing another site. Interesting. No, he was minus two because of uh, Lord Sidious and... Oh, right. I forgot Lord Sidious counts. Power eight. That's pretty good. And Thrawn V. I'm so glad we, got a, we finally have an AI for that one. That's pretty good. Yeah, diff so we can differentiate all the other, like, the, the other Thrawn. In between Thrawn and Thrawn? Yeah. Our three copies of Thrawn. And they all use the same Thrawn. That's the, that's the funny part. Like, they all use just Grand Admiral Thrawn as the underlying card. Well, the two. So, like, I like to have all of my slips on my cards at all times. So, mm -hmm. like, three throngs is a little costly well i mean you have access to brian fred sure i mean you do too now <laughs> i use star wars ccg cards just like everybody else yeah i also use the pc site so the pc site is probably the first ones i go to just because i want to support the pc though 
So we have our first fight of the this match. Savaza Press versus Tuas Ka, just like in the movies. So Tuas Ka can, oh no, does not predict when Dark Side initiates. But there's We're the path, path of least resistance. Toss away. That will guarantee that uh, Joe is going to keep five aliens on table. Yes. I'm a little surprised to see that Brad didn't grab the path, though. I think it's lost. I mean, I know it's lost, but you don't want him doing it multiple battles. I think it's unique, too. It is. Okay, never mind. More concerned, so I probably would have passed away from... Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, it's both. Well, I mean, I'd be a little it's... concerned of uh, a command here adding a destiny. Because Kira's only forfeit five with the thing. But four with watering hole. Yeah. I guess you're probably fine. He grabbed command, right? So he did. Probably not gonna play command. Okay, there's a destiny of five, so it's a nine right now. That's enough to clear Kira. Yes. Joe draws. Draws a four. So draws a five. Yeah, so you trade Thrawn for Kira. I think Joe's okay with that. at the hallway also. And Joe is threatening drains of totaling to six next turn. I think Savage is going to move in front of Ayla. Oh, true. Eh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Keep your eyes open here to uh, prevent Asajj from firing. Let's see if Brad has the point man or a sense here. Use his wild card to the keep your eyes open. No swings, so just draw on destiny. Raise a mean to less than three, but yeah. it was a three. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's a three. I, th I, I always forget that it's a plus two because of. Uh, oh, yeah, it's the Sith Fury. So Dooku goes into his hand. He draws a four, so that's definitely enough to get rid of Ray. So this site will just be cleared. No, over, probably no overflow or anything. Yeah, Joe also draws a four. Yuxkit becomes a plus one because of ancient watering hole. Or no, plus uh, five total. Yeah, plus five total. So trade, and again, I think Joe's okay with that. And I'm pretty sure Brad is definitely okay with that. At least in the early game. Yeah. Joe in need of getting some sort of retrieval going at this point. And he's he's a force push for massage. Nice. Okay. I believe that's what, once per game? With Savage, yeah. yeah. Once per game, they exchange a card in hand with a Sith character. So, okay, there's a reason to play Savage in this deck. Yeah, it's a good deck for him because he's always going to be minus at least one or two. Yeah. And that was his, always his problem was he had such a high deploy cost. I mean, he did receive an errata to, to reduce it a little bit, so that was good. He also lost his assassin status. That's bad. 
<laughs> so again, Joe's going to be able to drain for six this turn. Now, okay, so Savage is not a Dark Jedi, so it would be a drain of one there for Brad. Joe activates. Yeah, that's fine. It's free. Hmm? It's free for now, so that's fine. Yeah. Brad saved three force in his reserve or in his force pile, so I'm thinking he's got he saved it for the Imperial Command just in case. You gotta stay safe in space. Yeah. Sense and uh, Lord City is off the top for Brad. Joe pulls a card from his force pile. Uh, both players have 24 cards in life force at this point. Joe still has two more drains of two coming down the pipe. I mean, this is a pretty even game, I would say, right now. Mm -hmm. um, that favors Brad because he needs to lose by, what, 15 or less? Yeah. Well, it didn't go to Lost Pals. And in first the first game, it was uh, 19 to 41 in favor of Brad. Yeah. So I, I think if you're Joe, you've really got to focus on winning by 17 or more. And here's our last two drains for Joe. Drains of two at the first drain at, at the Doctrine Bay. It goes Atlanta Dobrid combo off the top. And a forlorn with concussion rifle from hand. Interesting. And he loses a force field and a Dooku's lightsaber from the force pile. I don't like that because now if he does have the command, he's not going to be able to play it. Yeah, that's interesting, losing it from force pile instead of reserve. Like, you choose to leave three force for something. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is he loses a Dooku's lightsaber, which would be really good in this matchup. Is he tracking? I wonder if he's tracking something on top of his deck, but I can't imagine he is. Well, he did lose a Lana Dobry combo, so he should know what the next destiny is. Okay, figuring Dan comes down. That's going to allow Joe to start retreating as long as they stay on the table. But we know that Brad has a Count Dooku in his hand. And so if Lana was on the top. Next one would be whatever he drew in the Sith Savage Fury. or the Thrawn battle. Uh, Sith Fury yeah, would Sith be Fury. next. Sith Fury and then whatever he drew in the Thrawn battle. The Fury, and then a mystery card, and then whatever he drew in the throne battle. Oh, yeah, because he had to pay one for the initiation. Yeah. Also, he swung. No, he didn't swing. That's it. Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> Still early. It, it really is, and like I, I should have been at the Steeler game today, but I'm here instead. Could have seen them give up that touchdown they just gave up. Oh. <laughs> I just don't feel like moving, hence why I didn't go. Yeah, so figuring Dan comes down. Back up to six aliens. Ando with blaster pistol. Interesting. I mean, he's a smuggler, and you can activate more cards, and yep. Joe just is going to do that. Uh, I assume you're going to 
shuttle him down, maybe move Ayla somewhere. Uh, you, you can move in front of Lord Sidious, but I mean, that runs the risk of, like, a, say, a sniper combo. Uh, he, he, Ayla can only move to the West Gallery. Or the. Could she even go to the Upper Plaza? No. Yeah, okay, you can. Yeah, you can't really do much about that drain at the where Lord Sidious is. I think you're fine with the just ultimatuming it. Just sell six cards in his hand. Let's see what else he's gonna do. I would guess Han Chewie coming down. You're trying to set up a way to, uh... Well, he goes into his move phase. Oh, okay. Then I would guess no Han Chewie coming down. Joe is currently shield broken. Yeah, he saves a lot of force in his force pile. moves the wild card over in front of the invisible hand. Ayla in front of Savage Repress. Yeah, I think moving over in front of the invisible hand here is the right move. Yeah, that's why I thought he would play Hanshui Falcon, right? Because then you can yeah. leave Overseer by itself. I guess you have to, if you're Joe, you have to take a couple chances, and the one you're taking here is that um, Brad isn't playing much more space, if any. I'm assuming that Joe has like an alternative to fighting in his hand. Also, reasonable assessment. So he's blocking all. Uh, he's blocking every drain except for that Lord Sidious drain. Again, with ultimatum on the table, it is only a drain of two. But we know that Brad has Count Dooku in his hand. So let's see what Brad's going to do. He activates everything except for one. Huh. So I'm assuming we're only going to see one fight here. Train of two at the North Corridor. Joe loses barrier from his hand. Activating down to one is kind of weird because you want like we talked about it to uh, last turn where you like you want to initiate multiple battles. Yeah, and he also loses a local defense and put that down from his hand. So Joe's sitting at nineteen in life force. How is he? So Brad, so Brad looks with uh, the, the uh, his now Huda at his one card in his deck. So it's unknown to us, but Brad, at least Brad knows. I mean, both players know. So. True. Uh, I think if you're Brad, you've got to go fight Figure and Dan. You don't want uh, Joe to retrieve anything with that, with the uh, our little music group. Uh, that makes sense to me. There's Aura Singh. I don't know why you wouldn't go down with Dooku. You Gunray into space. He may just be blocking drains and like daring Joe to fight into him. That's a good point. Is Brad Kipple the passive player on Gamma? No, that's Paul Myers. There's Grievous. In front of Twaz. Now, I don't think Brad's one of the... He, he is a fast player. I would say... Uh, who would you say is the fastest player on Gimp? Uh, I'd like to say it's me. Uh, Justin plays pretty fast. Justin yeah. Desai. 
Um, I feel like Chris Kelly plays pretty quick. Um, Riley can play really fast too. That's a stat I would like to figure out because we know, like, I would love to see who like our fast players are. So, uh, <laughs> Brad does act. Uh, he uses most of his force power. He's only got one force save. So again, we we know he's going to only fight one place here. I think he's just getting in front of drains, right? Like you're, yeah, he can go cause damage. Pathing to remove uh, to move Ayla secure in front of Twa's car. Brad grabs it with his free uh, grabber. Interesting too. I, I think if you're Brad, you got to fight with a uh, Ara Singh just so you can get re the retrieval off the field. So all of the aliens are immune to less than four, right? Uh, believe I'm not sure. Yeah. So if that's not a four, yeah. then you don't battle at all. True. Yep, and he's not going to battle. Uses one force to move Grievous away from Ayla Secure in Twa's car. That's... I think that's a smart move there. So Joe's going to be able to drain for four force total. Uh, more if he has another path. Get that up to six. Going to retrieve one with Figure and Dan. Yeah. And he can actually potentially... Well, with gun... Okay, so Brad's getting three Destiny up in space currently. Yes. So it, it will likely be two because you send trench used. Mm -hmm. um, so you won't get one for ability, but you'll get one for Grievous and one for Newt. No, you would get one for ability. No, because Grievous, or not Grievous, oh, Gunray. Yeah. Gunray doesn't a have pilot. a pilot ability. So, yeah, you want to get that. Uh, yeah, you would get your two because of Grievous and Newt. But Joe activates everything, not saving anything in his reserve deck. Yep, moot point. So, like, we're going to see them both do the same thing here, and that's just kind of get in front of the other person and dare you to battle. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might see Figure and Dan move away. True. But, I mean, that would make up a drain of one, though, for Brad. The fact that Brad could go as wide as he is is really good for him. Because the other thing is, Joe, as he takes cards out of his force pile, is taking cards out of that life force. So, I mean, he's right now at 17, and he needs 17 to, to win. I can retrieve one here with Figurin. For two at Bestman, they're in for two at the Incinerator. Mm -hmm. Brad down to five cards in hand. One of them's Dooku. Joe still has 10 in hand, so we can see him doing a bunch of stuff this turn. True. Well, 
Leia Rebel Prince is coming down. I mean, you can't cancel the drain where Lord Sidious is, but you can cancel all the rest of them. You can cancel Grievous Drain, which is pretty good. Yeah. Or the Savage Press one. I wouldn't be surprised to see him move in front of that one at some point. Mm -hmm. Milos coming down. This is what I was talking about, where you can just go wide. Yeah. Lee Sub Serlin. And there's another celebration. So, like you called it, Joe plays two celebration in his deck. We're back up to a healthy number of aliens now, too, right? Because it's one, two, three, four, five, eight, six, seven, eight different aliens. Yeah, that's, that's kind of nice if you're Joe. So, I mean, you're potentially retrieving three next turn uh, with the celebration, and then another one with Figure and Dan. I think if you're Joe, you move the figure and Dan over. I mean, there's only a drain of one there. Well, it would become a drain of two with your watering hole. Well, no, no, I meant it's a drain of one f uh, for Brad with uh, R6. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't clarify that. Uh... So you are potentially taking drains of one and three if you're Joe. Or one and two, so a total of three. And <laughs> Arcana coming down. I love it. Now there's a, re a really good reason to move that figure in Dan. Everybody loves a non unique Arcana. Uh, yeah. You usually don't see those being played outside of like all the Jedi, the all the Jedi format and some of the. Uh, the retro, like, premiere, A New Hope format. But so Joe going old school. Sorry. There's a lot of cards that cancel reacts. Yeah, exactly. He moves so the Joe, wild card. I don't... Intent with taking drains of two and one, it looks like, and you cancel two others with uh, Leia. Leia this turn. Saving three, three force, cool. maybe? But he's doing a lot of potential drains. I mean, you've got to... The, the board won't stay like this, but you have to imagine that you're getting away with at least, like, four to six next turn. Yeah. And potentially retrieving three. So, in reality, Brad's really no, not doing any damage unless the board changes significantly. Which I'm sure it will. I agree. I mean, like I said, we know that there's a Dooku in Brad's hand at this point. Brad activates almost everything, saving only one in his reserve deck. And we know that Joe still has an Han Chewie and the Falcon in his hand as well. Brad, in his activate phase, checks out his destiny. I don't know why he used his once per game. Could have just used... Yeah. He's got like an Ellis or something. That's the only thing I'm thinking is, like, he's got something in his hand that he wants to know in his control phase or, or his deport. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you could use the now Hutta. So, I mean, you use the now Hutta first after you drain. And there's the there's Leia canceling that first drain. Puts a rebel barrier on top of his deck. 
And then the next one would be Ray. And he puts Ray on top of his deck as well. So now he's got a one and a four. But I'm assuming he's going to lose those two to the, this turn. Yep, there goes Ray. You want the barrier just to... And Din Djarin. No, you don't want the barrier because Blast Door controls. Not just for the four. Sniper on the Arcana. There's one way to get rid of him. Yeah. You can uh, cancel this with rescue, right? Yeah. Let's see. Does oh, rescue, have... though. Arcana no. is dead. Poor little Arcana. Greg Shaw rejoices. Why is Greg Shaw rejoicing? Because Greg lost to an Arcana. In what? The Worlds in 2002. Was he playing Angelo? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Greg's watching this right now. Hmm. I mean, the chat went quiet, so. He also went quiet, though, so that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a lot going on. It was a lot of looking through force piles. the rebel barrier up top uh joe lost r2 brave little droid from his hand that's a fun question why can't i deploy dooku That is a question. If he is not in the middle, interesting. I don't see any reason why you couldn't be able to play Dooku. Did he choose? Oh, did he? Who did he choose? Chose Dooku. That was the first thing I looked at. Chose Dooku. Okay. Yeah. Why aren't you going away? Sorry, everybody. I got to refresh it. never seen this bug before. Yeah. Uh, Jared's saying that this bug happened to him in the OCS this month. Mm. Similar to Black Sun. Gross. forgets that you can deploy Dooku. Yeah. Well, Jared, what do you want to do? Yes, it is. This is a huge bug.
just like they're just gonna progress on. I hate to see something like this happen. I really do. Our Sigma's over in front of Bigger and Dan. It's going to block some of the drain, so yeah, it looks like Joe's going to be able to do six points of damage this turn. Possibly seven, unless Brad plays the... Okay, so it's going to be four, maybe five. I assume he's going to play the uh, resistance shield. I mean, probably, yeah. Well, he's got a couple cards to lose, I guess, if he's got a Dooku in hand. Oh. Yeah, he's got a 12-card hand right now. I'm just looking for more characters. Seven cards left. I mean, he's got plenty of cards to lose, but seven cards in his life force. And Joe's going to retrieve four this turn. Yeah, Dooku could have killed Leia. Or Lee Sub. Well, but I think you take care of stuff on uh, Cloud City to get rid of uh, Celebration Retrieval. <clears throat> uh, he lost Kylo and P-59 already. Character-wise, I don't know who else he has. I think Dr. E would be one. Maybe Mara. Mara. Maybe like Chelly. That's not super helpful. Indianapolis just sucks against Jacksonville. <laughs> I know that's completely off topic, but I just had to say it. Well, you got time. Joe's picking a card. Jets are giving Cleveland a run. Just still picking a card. Yeah, I think they're playing on just to despite this Dooku issue. I mean, I hate to say it, like if you're Brad, you definitely have a reason to to protest this game. There's resistance. We a drain of two and a drain of two. 
Retrieval of three and a retrieval of one. There's a path for an extra drain of two. Dude, I forgot about that. And retrieving four, uh, five this turn is between Figure and Dan and the Cloud City celebration. Yeah, our cone is coming back. It is. We're about to see Joe do his range of six in total. So even if he had Dooku, let's say he goes after I think Leia would have been the right choice, right? Because then you, you cut the the thing down by one. Or maybe Melos would have been the right choice, but yeah, like one of the two on Cloud City. Um you're still, with that path, you're still going to end up taking drains of four and five and retrieval of three. So, so far it's two. So, Brad is playing Zuckus and Miss Hunter as he revealed that with Lisa Absurla. And here we go with the drains. Drain of three, uh, capped at two. Yeah, I think with the Dooku uh, bug, I really hate to say it, but it kind of like set the the tone for this game. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it, it really changed the the game a little bit. I mean, Joe's still gonna be able to retrieve a whole bunch of force here, so like, yeah, if he can stay on three battles. Yeah. So, Joe Olson. Wins again. I mean, yep. I hate to say it, but Brad was, uh, you gotta think Brad was really dejected after that bug. Yeah, he's saying that, yeah, even Brad's saying that the bug was devastating. I agree. Like, that just sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that QMC just is able to spread out and like do a whole ton of damage. I guess I was wrong about it being a win more card. Um Yeah. So okay, well Joe. So Joe Olson is your back to back. Jabba Brawl Champion. Uh, I believe he gets he gets some pretty cool prizes for winning this. Yeah, right. He gets his choice of uh, any PC XL deck box um, or a sealed EPP Boba Fett or that Reflections 1 foil sheet. Let's see. Yeah, he gets... Yep. Well, he gets the reflection one. Uh, yeah, he gets the reflection one foil sheet, PC deck stuff. Yeah. So. So congratulations to him. Also, congratulations to David Woods. Did he win the? Uh, yeah, he won, achievement hunter. He won the achievement hunters and slash, uh, the better copy of. Uh, I Jedi. I Jedi. Yeah. So, uh, I wonder if Kendall's going to sign it for him. I think that'd be <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. You know where there won't be Dooku bugs? World's 2022. Yeah. 
It's true. That's coming up. Yep. About a month. A little under a month. Yeah, a little under a month. I think you're going to the world champion. I will be there. See who's all signed up for Worlds really quick. We, uh, bounce out of here. We're at 39 people for Worlds. Oh no, this is Road to Worlds. I'm sorry. For Worlds, we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I count 35 for the main event so far. I also count 35. Uh, three people signed up just for the cube only are Matt Simpson, Joel, and Phil. They're signed up for the main event also. So, But definitely a lot of people who I expect to go who are not still signed up. So if you're going, make sure you guys sign up. It's going to be a heck of a time. So... Yeah, worlds. In less than a month, I make sure you guys go. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna have fun. I know Bill's gonna have fun. I always have fun. So, you want to get Joe in here? Yeah. Was we'll in the invite, chat. We'll invite Joe really quick. I mean, I would love to get on Joe on Hollow Theater, but he's always busy on a Wednesday. Hello. Hey. Let me mute the Twitch, Joe. Not going. Well, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it kind of did. Like, it definitely. I mean, it was a good it was a good event. Like, I really it was really fun to watch and everything. But just that end, I've never seen that bug before. I don't know what. Like, uh, Jeff messaged me after the game and was like, "He's like, oh, now this bug." And I was like, "Oh, is this a known bug?" And he's like, "No, I've never seen it." <laughs> Jared says said uh, he's seen it. Yeah, he had an OCS game with it this year, this month. Okay. So okay, well. Like, um, you gotta think like anybody who plays Agents of Black Sun in this deck. You just sure, sure, it. but this isn't even an Agents of the Black Sun. Like I didn't, I didn't know about this bug. Um, yeah. Obviously, there was there was zero reason he couldn't. He had plenty of force. There was plenty of places to go to. There was he wasn't out of play. Like yeah, I don't know. I don't and know what the epic event had Dooku on it. So right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's. <laughs> disappointing when uh, Jump Bug affects something so much. Um, yeah. And I think he still could have won the match um, if he had tracked his masterful move combo better because he was it was just so tight. I was around sixteen. I needed he was going to win on Lost Piles if we went to Lost Piles. Yeah. And uh, and he just his final turn he activated way too much. He activated all but one, and then he snipered, and then he just had nothing to do with all his force. So he like moved three guys, and then drew like. 12 cards and and it was still like i thought he was tracking it too because he was purposely losing from force pile at one point mm -hmm. to not lose the masterful combo and he lost like a dooku saber from force and stuff like that and uh and so so i thought we both knew where it was but then it ended up like it was either the first or second card on his reserve when he activated that turn and so it was the yeah. bottom of his force either the very bottom or second from bottom that makes sense because I, I wasn't sure why he was losing from Force Pilot either. But if he, if he was tracking that masterful move, okay. he yeah, been yeah. So that's that's yeah. what I figured. And he there, he called, he lost like two off the top, and then he's like lost one from hand, and he lost two from Force Pilot. I was like, yeah, he knows exactly where that masterful is because yeah. he drew it for a destiny. After he played it, he drew it for like a weapon destiny. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. So um, I thought I thought it was like, all right, well, he's just gonna, you know, activate like ten or whatever. And, and then be able to, like, deploy, do stuff, and draw into it, and still have a reasonable life force. And he'd still have, like, 15... Anyway, I think he still could have won the match, even with the bug, but um, but he lost track of that. Um, but then, yeah, of course, the bug changes everything. And the first game was just a disaster. Like, <laughs> uh, it was... I, I, I never saw um, Bridge or or the security tower, so no activation all game. And it was like, all right, cool, turn one, I can go blow up stuff with my ship. And then he was just like... 
had everything to come down and mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of action. Just like, yeah, was not expecting like uh, he had kind of a big hand, but was not expecting to see multiple stuff to come down he and like 10, he had like ten cards, but yeah, Bail and Gold Leader was killer, and yeah. yeah. I feel like if he doesn't have the gold leader there, it's a different. Game. Right, he can't. He can't attack. He he he. Because uh, I'd be drawing two destinies and clear out a bunch more stuff, and so he'd have to probably deploy a guy to the Dune Sea, move Tana back, shuttle up, and just it's a huge tempo thing. And then I'm draining free, and yeah, yeah. So, what made you go with those two decks? Like especially like when you started out with Hunt Down V. Was that just a, a meta call because you figured he was playing Diplo? I figured Diplo or Zero Hour um, and aggressive Dark Mains with Blast Door Controls and First Strike is good and just fun to play. Um, yeah, so I uh, I think its worst matchup could be like some kind of Light Mains, um, and the best Light Mains are banned in the format. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and QMC, I was putting him on... Some kind of like walkers or something. So I even this morning threw in what chance do we have? Um, well, I mean, slip sliding away was banned. Oh well, <laughs> I guess I should look closer <laughs> at the format. Uh, well, I guess I. I said the same thing. Card. Dan yeah. was like, "What do you think uh, Brad's gonna play for dark?" And I was like, "Probably walkers, right?" Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and the chat quickly cor uh, corrected us. It, it, it's it's hard to uh, to keep track of all the stuff that. And I, I played, I got all those games out of the way early, and so it was before V19 came out, all of that, and and then Brad got his games in late, and I never saw what he was playing during the actual, like, mm. event, and so I, I was just trying to put him on his, his sort of normal range of decks. Okay. So, back-to-back uh, -back Jawa Brawl Champions, how does that feel? Uh, Houtini. Now, does it feel better than your back-to-back -back world champions? For sure, for sure. Jawa, Jawa. Uh, I mean, there's just way more participants in the Jawa one, so it's definitely a more prestigious event. That's the correct answer. Great job. So your you, payments. Yeah. I mean, this right here is what pretty much sealed you in the Hall of Fame. There we go. They'll have to start a second Hall of Fame. The Jawa, the Jawa Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame? That's right. Yeah. Uh, five we players all day. Albano and me. Well, don't forget David Woods. He just won the uh, the achievement. Oh, that's true. The achievement brawl. That that I, don't get me wrong. This was exciting and everything, but the achievement brawl was just. I yeah, I popped in on that on on Garrett and Corin streaming it. It was like R two with eighteen devices and everything. I was like, this is cool. This is yeah. this is like classic Star Wars you played when you were ten years old and you didn't have any cards and you were just like. Your, your your like retractable arm can deploy on your droid, so you're putting that in the deck just to do it. Why not? Play all the things. Yeah. So, no, you're going to Worlds. How are you feeling about that? <sighs> uh, the <laughs> meta is, I'm just like, literally day to day, we're like, all right, I'm playing this day one, and then by the next day, we're like, all right, I'm playing this day one, and it's like... <laughs> Like, nobody's going to be able to put us on decks because we can't put ourselves on decks. We're literally just, like... I, I think that's like, what every team is going through every right now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal. That's a good thing, though. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I saw Chu and his kids not only signed up for the queue, but they signed up for the weekend pass. So that, yes. that's awesome. I'm hoping I, I, we'll think, I think Johnny is not playing in the main event. Oh really? Uh, he signed so up for just, it. Could be just wrong. basically got the weekend pass so that he can do the like the team event in Cube and maybe Constellation. I mean, I mean, I, I can see him doing the Cube. Why not play? Like, I feel like I, well, I pay, hope he does play. Why not play for, for like the, the uh, do it and then he might be able to do like I mean he could do com uh, commentary. I think he said he's going to do on he might volunteer on Sunday. And, and the other thing is it does support the PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. As so, does the Road to Worlds event that's happening in like five days. Yeah. Or starts in three days, I guess. Registration yeah. deadline's five days. Yeah, you got it's that so coming up. Forward. You got uh, the OCS finishing up this month. Uh, I think you're not you're not registered for the you're not in the OCS uh, top sixteen. Yet, I'm not right? qualified, yes. I, I'm in a good spot for an at large bid right now. Um, okay, that's good. Ten but, one also this month, right? I'm ten and one right now, so I might make the monthly bid if I win my last one. But otherwise, I'm in a good spot for the overall at large. 
think I will. I think I will qualify if I lose my last one and I and multiple other people run the table. I might not, but pretty good. Um, because yeah, right now Justin DeSaiko went undefeated this month. Come on, dude. That guy's just been beast moding the whole year, <laughs> undefeated with light side, and then yeah. what, like thirty-one and five with dark, like. Yeah. Even that number is incredible. Like, dude's ready for Worlds. I mean, he's not signed yeah. up yet, but with Johnny signed up, you got to think that uh, Decide's going to go. I mean, him and MHC, they've been cranking games. If you ever go in the Jump lobby, there's always a private game between those two, yeah. or maybe like Decide and Jump Tom. Let's see. Yeah. They'll be ready. And it's yeah. scary that Decide's working scary. with Jump Tom. <laughs> Yeah, and and MHT, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be well prepared. They're gonna be practiced. It's it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good event. How about you, Taco? Does New Allies have a, a a team week hangout coming up before Worlds at Drews or something? We got a uh, so this Saturday we're doing our boot camp. But we're doing last oh, year nice. we did it in person, which was great. But this year we're doing it in four separate geographic locations. So we're gonna pull together. Like Brian Fred's flying into Philly. I'm driving up. Uh, so me and Greg will play there with Brenson. Um, I know regionals down in Atlanta is happening, so they'll get like Kessling, Jeremy, and all them will get games in. Oh, that's this weekend, huh? Yeah. Nice. Pittsburgh. So we'll have some results after this weekend, and we'll see how that goes. Hayes is going to uh, to the Dagobah. Re- is it Dagobah regionals? Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for for him to, to <laughs> do a little scouting. Well, no, no, no. Uh, he's got some uh, spicy stuff cooked up. Oh, nice. We're pretty excited for uh, for Throto. Jonathan's going to be playing in that. There's going to be some ridiculous things in that, at that tournament. Nice. That should be a fun event. Yeah, it's it, that's going to be a fun one. Uh, I know Pittsburgh's got a local. Kendall's going to drive out for that one. So definitely going to see what he's playing. Uh, we have a local too. We have a league event next. Yeah, the twenty fourth. Yeah, so indoors got one. It'll be a whole weekend of a bunch of Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, everybody prepping. And then, like you said, we got the World to Worlds coming. Uh, that comes, starts in like three days. Uh, yeah, Worlds and. This it's is time to get excited. We, uh, we haven't seen the Arado go live on Gimp for zero hour yet, so expecting that to tomorrow. Happen though. Tomorrow. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, what do you what are your what are your thoughts on zero hour, Joe? Um, with the Serata and everything, it 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 very much plays into the meta we already had of rock paper scissors, where it's like there are certain decks that are very strong against zero hour, and there are certain ones that are very bad against it, and it's like there's not a lot of play, there's not a lot of like these are pretty even and we're gonna play around each other type of thing. Um, yeah. And so for the decks where, so regarding the errata, for the decks where um, Zero Hour is just very good against it, it did immediately seem like this is too good, like it's doing too much. But then the counter argument was, but look at these other decks that just like, I mean, I my loss in OCS this month was to a Revenge of the Sith um, played by Stubbly that started Kashyyyk and Combat Response, and um, I think it was, it was a Vader uh, yeah. Revenge of the Sith. And um, and I was playing Zero Hour, and he just crushed me. Um, it was just like aggressive dark mains with first strike and blast door controls, and like that's pretty good against Zero Hour. And um, so it's 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 going to be interesting to see where it falls if if players sort of figure out what the best build is, if players figure out, and if someone decides like I'm going to take a worse deck to be better against Zero Hour, or I'm going to take a better deck yeah. but lose to Zero Hour. How much of the field do you think will be Zero Hour? How much will be players? You know, like, ah, I don't like some of those matchups. I'm going to go with, you know, a Yoda Muning and Old Allies, things like that. So that's, that's that's why we keep cycling through decks, and 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 I think everyone is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, again, congrats on the uh, the victory there. Uh, the final uh, in the Jawa Brawl. Yeah. Like... It, it feels a little bit like when the NFL team wins on the, like, on the ref's call at the end, and you're, you know, on, like, a bad call. And you're just like, yeah, congrats, cool, but also a bummer <laughs> that, that that affected the game. You know what I mean? So which prize are you going to go with? You have your choice. Uh, you can get the uncut reflection sheet, uh, the Boba Fett sealed EPP box, or one of uh, yeah, or a PC Excel deck box. 
<laughs> I, I, I have all the deck boxes. I'm waiting for round two now for when they when they do the next one. Um, nice. Um, the uncut sheet. Did, did you say it was reflections? Reflections one, dark side uncut sheet. What was in reflections one? I guess Vader, Darth Vader, Boba Fett, Death Stars. Is there a premier premier Vader foil? Yeah. Uh, there's Darth a Japanese Vader. one. I feel like the Japanese one's almost more common because it was just it was a <laughs> box topper from of... reflections too. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. Dark Lord of the Sith foil. Oh, yeah. uh, it's actually the image is up on the forums if you want to check it out. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll probably get that. Okay. Cool. It's All right, guys. I'm gonna go check what happened with football this morning. I just wanted oh, to pop God. on because that was just such a weird ending, and then I I came on to see if you guys were still streaming. Indianapolis is garbage. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Indianapolis is garbage. Pittsburgh needs to change out their quarterback. That's the two big takeaways this morning. Okay. Well, cool. thanks for joining us today. And uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, thanks for streaming, guys. Week. Make sure you guys ever everybody, everybody watch. We don't have a guest yet. So we'll come up with something good. Next week is the Hollies. So everybody go vote on those. And, uh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. And uh, we'll see everybody on uh, Wednesday. <laughs>